Hello everybody and welcome! It is indeed an exciting time to be a space enthusiast. NASA has just announced the three companies they chose to develop a lunar lander for their Artemis project and I'm going to break it down for you. The winners for the human landing system contract are… SpaceX's Starship an almost Kerbal concept by Dynetics and an Apollo-style system from the national team, a group led by Blue Origin. Let's start with the one that people probably got the most excited for – Starship. From what we have heard during the press conference and what we have seen in the provided renders, this is going to be a different variant of Starship compared to the one that SpaceX has shown us so far. There are no fins for landing in an atmosphere. There will also be no shielding for re-entry. Both of these changes will reduce the mass of the vehicle, making way for potentially heavier payloads. Also, there appears to be a docking port on top of the vehicle, potentially to dock with Orion directly or the Lunar Gateway. The Gateway is of course the proposed space station in lunar orbit, which NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein called essential for a permanent presence on the Moon during yesterday's conference call. Another detail in the renders created quite a discussion on Twitter and on my Discord – link in the description below – there appear to be three holes on the side of Starship, potentially adding landing thrusters so that during landing the vehicle would not throw up so much dust compared to a landing with a powerful Raptor engine. Some immediately thought of the Super Draco thrusters, which are used in the Crew Dragon in-flight abort system, but I'm skeptical since those would require a completely different type of propellant than the main engines and thus would increase the complexity and inherent risk. Those things could also be landing lights for landing Starship in the shadows of craters where future explorers will potentially search for ice to turn into water, oxygen and rocket propellant, something I was leaning towards earlier, but it could also be a very creative creative render artists just doing their thing. We'll see. An interesting detail for the SpaceX proposal is that it includes an in-space propellant transfer demonstration, meaning they plan to refuel Starship in space. This has of course always been part of SpaceX's plan, but I also assume that this is a way for Jim Bridenstein to get around the rather short-sighted no fuel depots in orbit directive the administration had to follow so far. NASA writes on their own website that there will be a propellant storage starship in Earth orbit, which will regularly be refueled by tanker starships. The lunar starship will launch to orbit, dock with the propellant storage starship, refuel and then travel to the moon. When will Starship be ready to fly to the moon? <laughs> that is of course unclear, but progress on the vehicle has been very fast in Boca Chica, Texas. The only rocket being capable of launching Starship to the moon will of course be SpaceX's own super heavy booster, which only exists in cool video animations so far. Next up, let's talk about the Dynetics Lander. This thing uses quite the unique design, having a low slung crew and or habitation compartment, making it easier for astronauts to leave and enter the vehicle. There is also a little detail that makes this the most Kerbal of the landers. In order to reuse the vehicle and utilize it for descent and ascent, Dynetics proposes to use, and I quote, multiple modular propellant vehicles to fuel the engines at different point in the missions. So basically they are doing what every KSP player has done – use extra fuel tanks and drop them when no longer needed. Another almost Kerbal aspect is the modularity of the design. Dynetics plan to use legacy components from what they call heritage spaceflight programs. This should reduce cost and risk since those components are already proven. A similar approach that the United Launch Alliance has chosen to construct their new Vulcan Center launch vehicle. Speaking of which, Dynetics claims their system will be able to launch on ULA's rocket or on SLS Block 1B, which is probably further away than the Vulcan. Finally, let's talk about Blue Origin. The space company of Amazon founder Jeff Bezos has created quite the stir when they published their Blue Moon Lunar Lander concept. The idea was to provide just a descent platform which other system providers could use to transport their vehicles on. For Artemis, Blue Origin has rounded up the so-called national team, which also includes Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman and Draper to create the integrated lander vehicle, ILV for short. They are going for an 
Apollo style system consisting of a transfer stage, a landing stage and an ascent vehicle. All of these supposedly assemble in orbit high above the moon, potentially close to either an Orion or the lunar gateway. After this the transfer stage will get the vehicle close to the surface where the lander comes in. When the crew have performed the surface tasks, the ascent module will take them back to orbit. What I haven't been able to find out is whether or not the transfer stage will then bring the ascent vehicle back to Orion and or the lunar gateway, or if the ascent vehicle can do this on its own. The transfer stage will be made by Northrop Grumman and is based on the Cygnus cargo vehicle, which is regularly flying to the International Space Station. The ascent module from Lockheed Martin will leverage technology from the Orion crew capsule. Blue Origin will provide the lander, which does look a bit different than the originally proposed Blue Moon vehicle. And Draper will provide descent guidance, flight avionics and software. Due to the modular design, the ILV can be launched either split in its modules on commercial rockets, potentially Blue Origin's new Glenn, or fully assembled on SLS. What is of note here is that the rather young Blue Origin has taken the role of project lead for the national team. Not sure how well that sits with the old guard companies like Lockheed or Northrop, but so far they all sound very happy to be able to provide a lander for NASA. Speaking of old guard, a concept by Boeing did not make the cut. Maybe the delays of SLS had something to do with that. So, which of these three landers will touch down on the moon first? And will all three even be used? NASA plans to look at all three proposals very closely during the next 10 months. Why 10 months? The contracts end in February 2021. Until then, NASA expects the selected companies to perform demonstration missions and will scrutinize the designs. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine did say, however, that the agency has to follow two goals. First and foremost, landing humans on the moon until 2024. Second, establishing a permanent presence on the moon. Even if one of the three lander concepts gets preferred for the first goal, the others might be valuable assets to use for the second. From this perspective, I would have to argue that the ILV by Blue Origin's national team has the best chances to be the first to land on the moon. It uses proven technology for the most part and does not rely on any single rocket to launch it. However, none of these systems have yet been integrated and tested. Same goes for Starship. While progress in Boca Chica has been staggeringly fast, the required super heavy booster is nowhere in sight yet. Also, SpaceX would have to create three variants of Starship. The lunar lander variant, the propellant storage variant and the tanker variant. The latter two are not necessarily the same. If the storage Starship stays in orbit for extended periods of time, it will need to generate electricity and require improved shielding to reduce propellant boil-off. However, having a vehicle as capable as Starship ready to transfer crew and payload to and from the surface of the moon is a powerful asset. Bridenstine also said he is convinced SpaceX will enable a new generation of spaceflight with Starship, not just in regards to the Artemis program. So what are your thoughts on the selected lander concept for the human landing system? Which one do you think NASA will choose for their Artemis program? Which is most likely to ensure a permanent presence on the moon? Let me know in the comments or come over to my Discord, let's have a chat about it. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.